not going to beat around the bush. This trailer has been created so as to maybe get you curious about my novel, Waiting for the Man. Right. See? It's a real book. Next slide. Our story opens in New York. Not here in Times Square. More like the Lower East Side. But look at the New Yorkness of this photo. That's New York. Although everyone in there is probably a tourist. Our hero, Joe Fields, is a hotshot at an ad agency. He's created amazing award-winning campaigns for beer and diapers, and he's creating a new marketing segment, Hip Dog Food. He's a rising star, and he should be happy. And he is, until he's not. That's how things start. This is a Venn diagram about the relationship between beer and productivity. Just because we all wish it were a closer relationship. Back to our story. The man appears in Joe's dreams, and then in more than his dreams. And one day the man says, wait. Remember Huggy Bear from Starsky and Hutch? Why, yes, I am old. What of it? Joe's weight attracts attention from the media, more specifically from a city reporter from the Post, Dan Fontana. Yes, his name is that on purpose. Here's the thing. Joe eats badly during his weight, but he doesn't gain any weight. Don't you hate people like that? This is a bar graph showing usage of select words in Waiting for the Man. Japan's in there a lot. You'll see why soon. The media amplify Joe's story around the world. They have a stake in his weight, just like he does. Plus, we get to meet Sophie from Montreal, who Joe wants to lust after, but doesn't, because he's waiting for the man. And then the man instructs Joe to go west, and Joe announces that he will, and a car dealer from Long Island offers to sponsor the trip and lends Joe a masculine red Honda Odyssey. Joe says goodbye to Sophie and to New York. And Joe heads west. He picks up a Japanese hitchhiker in Pennsylvania, hence the overuse of the word Japan in the book. He throws up in Indiana, and he knows he's west when he passes through St. Louis. He eats ribs in Kansas City, because if you don't, you're stupid. He eats at a Charlie Chaplin-themed family restaurant in Denver. More importantly, this is where Joe changes direction and heads north. This is a pie chart. See what I did there? There's a big discussion about Clifudi in this book. A very big discussion. Even an argument about it, if you will. And it's a weirdly important argument. But this is not a book about Clifudi. Or pie. Or food, even. Joe ends up in Montana, working at a luxury dude ranch spa. I'm not giving away anything by telling you this. You learn about Montana in Chapter 2, so the story is about the journey, but it's also about the destination. (laughs) 